Well, welcome back and welcome to R number three, restoring cellular energy. And let me just review. R number one was remove the source. R number two was regenerating the cell membrane. Remember, regenerating the cell membrane affects detox, epigenetics, changing gene expression uh, in obviously even so many other cellular functions, including obviously restoring cellular energy. So really all of these R's tie into one another. So we can't really separate one from the other. These are just the major cellular functions that need repair to actually fix the epidemic of conditions that we're seeing today. And in R number two, I talked about hormone conditions and how prevalent they are. And it's really not adding more hormones that's important. It's regenerating the cell membrane and really restoring the receptor to the hormones. That's where the key is. Well, as we look today, I told you we'll be drawing a lot of circles. Here we are again back to the cell, right? Of course, because this is the five R's of cellular healing. And remember, these R's really just give us a roadmap as practitioners to really what to do to fix the cell. And by the way, you know, I never really intended uh, for this to be taught to patients. However, the doctors that I trained started teaching this to patients uh, to get them to understand where their treatments were coming from. And, you know, it was driven probably by patient questions. And I said, oh yeah, that's a novel concept. I started doing it. So I learned that from the doctors that I trained and, uh, and patients get it. So it is simple enough that, you know, even the patient can understand the five R's, uh, that's for sure. Well, R number three is restoring cellular energy. And I kind of tipped my hand a little bit when I talked about, um, you know, the regenerating the cell membrane and how important cell energy is. Look, it is involved in every pathway that we see. In the patients that we're seeing, it's an epidemic of people in this country that really are lacking ATP. Now, I'm going to teach you a novel concept. You know, there's obviously ATP is made in the mitochondria, and that is the gasoline of the cell, right? And we know things, there's things that we can feed ATP with, like ribose and carnitine and, uh, you know, a lot of supplements that we're very familiar with, even coenzyme Q can help ATP. However, in just the last few years, we've learned a little more about ATP. Look, when we study athletes, we see that athletes actually have more mitochondria. So they have more factories to actually produce more what? Produce more energy. So yeah, we can give more ribose and more things to actually make more fuel, if you will. So we're adding, putting more logs or more wood on the fire. But what if we actually made more factories? Well, look, we've been working on now for quite some time a product called ENRG. E-Energy, right? It's a way to remember it. But it's actually small e, capital N, capital R, capital G. This product really, yes, it does fuel by adding wood to the fire, uh, but it also actually regenerates mitochondria. So you see, athletes have more mitochondria. Guess what sick people have? Most Americans that are surviving on coffee and other stimulants less mitochondria. So novel concept, let's regenerate the mitochondria, mitochondrial regeneration, and now we actually create more ATP that way. So we're actually taking sick folks in like athletes, getting them to actually have more mitochondria and therefore producing energy that way. One of the first things that I do in my most challenged cases is I give them this product. Uh, even oftentimes, even before I start fixing the cell membrane, because a lot of those folks can't oftentimes even break down some of the, uh, the fats. So sometimes I'm fixing digestion before I get there. Well, ENRG is always a product that is in my frontline protocol. Why? Because we need the fuel to get other products uh, or other things, other functions going, not only in the cell, but throughout the body. You need energy for everything. So the brain fogs, the digestive problems, um, you know, other hormone related conditions, a lot of it has to do with ATP. I'm going to talk a little bit, and I have been talking about inflammation, but what we know now with some new studies is the drop in ATP actually feeds back into creating more inflammation. So the lower ATP goes, the more inflammation goes up. And something else happens. You're seeing more and more very chemically sensitive people in your practice, food sensitivities. Well, we know that the lower ATP goes, the more it feeds back into a very specific inflammation cycle that I'm going to talk about called the no-ono cycle. This is new science that shows that this cycle, this inflammation cycle, when it breaks, it feeds back into itself. Well, low ATP causes this cycle to go more and more. Matter of fact, low ATP feeds into something called N 
N-M-D-A, N-methyl diaspartate. I've lost you just by saying that word, I'm sure. So don't listen to that. No, but this is, um, it's a neurotransmitter. You're familiar, it's called a, it's glutamate, You're most of you are familiar with. Well, glutamate receptors in the brain uh, are the most uh, excitatory types of receptors. As a matter of fact, GABA are the most inhibitory. Well, NMDA actually stimulates these receptors. NMDA receptors are, in fact, uh, glutamate receptors. So what happens is, is we know that certain things can actually drive up NMDA and therefore drive inflammation, almost like taking an excitotoxin. You know, so the effects that you would get by taking an excitotoxin or a glutamate type of excite, like MSG, well, you can, you know, really get the same response by raising NMDA in one way is to drop ATP. So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So, you know, I'm just kind of briefing you on some uh, new things that we're going to talk about. But raising cellular energy is key early on in your treatments to really get a lot of your other treatments to go. And again, the point I was making is a lot of these very sensitive patients are very difficult to treat. Your first thing is you want to raise up their ATP, their cellular energy. So restoring cellular energy, yeah, it has a, play, uh, a place where your brain works, digestion, and all these different processes we're seeing in the body. So restoring cellular energy, that concept alone is going to change your practice. And once again, and I said this before, the old days, we were using you know, three, four, five products, you know, coenzyme Q, ribose, carnitine. I mean, there were so many, and you might be using some of those now, and not that they're bad, um, but really new technology. And I could get into something called PQQ and how that works in cellular energy, but really regenerating mitochondria, that's the key. This isn't a product that you take and go, oh, you know, it's like drinking a cup of coffee, I have energy. No, no, no. This is a product that you keep patients on to really restore cellular function. You combine that with fixing the membrane, removing the source, now we have something. Look, R number four, I'm not going to tip you off and tell you what it is, but I can tell you this, it's the cause of the majority of degenerative diseases. So R number four, stay tuned for that. It's going to absolutely transform the way you think. This is really, really new stuff. Can't wait to teach you.